now know how to navigate the Final Cut Pro X environment, import assets, keep organized, and work in the timeline. And in the last segment, we covered editing tools, what they do, and the different editing types. Moving on, in this lesson, we will learn how to apply effects, how to choose and create presets, and how to copy and paste one or more effect attributes. Applying effects in Final Cut Pro 10 is really simple, and it starts out by using the effects browser. So let's take a look at the effects browser, where it is, what you can do with it, and then we'll go into deeper into saving presets, changing presets, and then copying and pasting some or all of the attributes from those presets onto other assets. So let's first take a look at applying a video effect to the standup I have here. So I'm gonna go over to my effects browser window, and these these buttons here on the far right in the light gray bar is the effects browsers. And if I click on here, this is all the video effects browsers, uh, transition browser, the title browser, generators browser, and even themes browser. So if I go over back to the video effects and I go and I want to apply some effects. So I'm going to go to all so we can see them all. And I want to add aged film to this stand up here. So I'm going to apply it. Ta-da, it worked. Now, if I undo that, you can actually preview before you apply, if you'd like, the effect on the video you're trying to see by just hovering over the top of it. And you can see that's how it looks. And it's very cool that you can go in and check that out, just like you could with your Clips browser. So I'm going to apply this aged film here. And I can go up here, and now within the inspector, I can adjust all the different things I want. I can add more scratches. I can lower the grain. I can actually add more hair and maybe some dust. And, you know, I'm going to change some jitter variants and maybe brightness variants. So now if I go over it, you can see, man, it's really doing a lot of stuff here. And maybe that is, you love it. Maybe you don't. It doesn't look all that great, but you get the idea. Now, say I want to do some kind of other effect on top of this or behind it. Now, the idea is that whatever the newest effect you add on actually goes below the last effect you added. So the first effect, the effect that's on top within the inspector, is the primary or the very first effect. It's the effect priority. So, and it goes from the top to the bottom. I'm going to now add a color look. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go colorize and I'm going to add this to my video here. So if I go here and let's go to a frame that shows a lot of these hairs and you can see that those hairs appear to be red and everything. So if I then switch and I put the colorize on top of the aged film, you can now see that those hairs and dust particles are actually white as they are set up to be and the video is really what's been colorized so i can lower the intensity here and you get kind of a sepia look it now has a little bit of a red tinge and it looks that way because of effect priority from the top down each effect goes to the bottom all the new effects go to the bottom if you need to rearrange those, maybe you put them in order of just creativity. You just go, oh, I want to put this and I want to put that on there. Play with the order to which because they will look different. Now next, if I actually say made the change to this aged film and I like the way this looks and I want to save this because I want to use this in projects into the future. Maybe I have some kind of show that I'm producing and I'm always going to be applying this and it's not necessarily the thing I'm working on right now. So if I want to save this as a preset, I can go up to File, Save Video Effects Preset, and there it is. Now I can title it, so I can say um, Crazy Aged Film, and I could say Save. Now if I had add, put any keyframes associated with this, so maybe there's a timing where I'm talking about an old-timey film look and I want it to come on over time, I could have those keyframes on there. Now if I wanted to maintain the timing of those keyframes, I could choose maintain keyframe timing. Or if I wanted to augment or change with the application of whatever I'm putting it on, I can have it stretched to fit so then it would actually change if I required it to. Now I'm not going to save this because I don't really think it looks all that great and quite frankly I don't need to. So I'm going to go cancel. The next part of applying effects is you might want to apply those effects to multiple assets or different parts of your timeline. Now, you can do that by, you know, just going and, and applying those effects again, or you can do something that's going to save you a little time, which is copy and paste onto other assets. So I have these colorized and age film, and I want to maybe that's going to be the theme of whatever I'm editing. And I'm going to go, and what I want to do is Command C will copy it. And if I go over to my other video here, I can go up to here to edit and paste 
attributes or command option V. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring up this window here. So what I can do is I can now choose, say I had scaled it or rotated it or do all sorts of all the different attributes that I might have changed and I can paste those on. But right now I'm just going to do the effects. So I'm actually just going to choose effects and I can go and I can change my keyframes, the same thing, maintain, timing, or stretch to fit, but I have no keyframes on there, so nothing to worry there. And I can go paste, and there it is. Now, I could have done that by just copying and pasting, but if I had, say, a really complex group of effects and scaling and lots of other changes, I can apply those, and it's really strong to be able to choose, pick and choose what you want to apply, as well as it makes it exactly the same. And that's been Applying Effects. Up next, we're going to teach you all about transitions. Thank <laughs> you.